All right, we're gonna do our thermal physics review here. Um, so I'm gonna go through some of the um, problems we'll have on the multiple choice part. Um, and they're, they're uh, different components of, um, of two different types of problems we'll deal with. Um, and so we'll just kind of try a couple of simple ones here. Now, generally what we're looking at with thermal physics is we're gonna be looking at um, things that involve um, phase changes um, kind of at the molecular level, and then we'll deal with um, the movement of gases, and then we'll talk about um, energy changes. Um, so when we go through here, uh, I've got a, a problem that I'm asking you about all these different components of heating a block of ice. I have a 1.5 kilogram block of ice. Um, it's held at a temperature of negative 40 degrees, and the ice gradually, the ice is gradually heated to a temperature of 140 degrees. So this is um, a pretty standard question in chemistry, um, and um, we'll also use it a little bit in physics here. So the equation for this, for all of these, um, whenever you're heating up any substance, is going to be uh, Q is equal to um, M C change in T. And this is mass times the specific heat of the substance times the change in temperature. And it gives you an answer in joules. Um, I won't do all of these problems um, because they're really what we're doing is I'm I'm breaking this this one problem down into five parts, and you've got to remember that what's happening when we're heating this stuff, and it's pretty much for all substances, is you have some point where you start off where you're a solid block, um, and you heat the block, um, and it slowly gains more and more energy until it reaches its melting point, melting or freezing point, and then it takes a little while for it to melt. It'll kind of stay at that temperature, uh, depending on, on how much latent heat it holds, and then eventually the whole uh, solid will turn into a liquid, uh, assuming the pressure and everything is set. And then the liquid will heat up until it reaches a point where it starts to boil or vaporize, and then it takes a while for it to vaporize because it takes quite a bit, a bit of energy to turn a substance from a liquid into a gas, and then eventually it'll turn into the gas and it'll continue to heat. So you get these kind of zigzaggy type graphs. Uh, and depending on the amount of energy the different substances hold uh, will depend, you know, determine how steep the slope is and how long it takes for uh, turning a solid to a liquid and a liquid into a gas. In this particular case, we're talking about water. Water actually has a really high heat capacity. It's, it holds on to heat really well and it, it heats things up very slowly, but once it does heat up, it, it doesn't lose that heat very quickly. Um, and so what I'm looking at here is I says, what is the amount of energy required to reach zero degrees? And this is this first part right in here. And so I'm going from negative 40 up to zero. So I'm not turning into a liquid at this point, but I'm just heating. And so we're going to use this equation, Q equals M, specific heat change in temperature. And so the mass is given as 1.5. We're going to multiply that by the specific heat of ice, which is 2100, and that's joules over kilograms Kelvin. Um, it doesn't really matter if you use Kelvin or Celsius in this case, since they're both on the same scale. Um, and the change goes from negative 40 to zero, so my change is zero. You always start with the final minus the initial, so zero minus minus 40, so this becomes a positive 40, my change. Okay, so that's the first component. 1.5 times 2100 times 40 gives me 126,000 joules of energy. Um, next phase, um, what's the amount of energy required to reach the liquid phase? So I'm right here, and I'm and that's right up here. I'm in this this spot here. Well, this this spot, all I'm doing is melting. We're we're at zero degrees. We're just trying to turn the solid into a liquid. There's no change in temperature, so I want to use this equation, but without the temperature change. So in this case, I'm going to be, my equation is going to be Q is equal to the mass times the latent heat. So the latent heat of fusion, the amount of energy required to for something to either turn into a liquid or go from a liquid to a solid, is this 3.33 times 10 to the fifth joules uh, per kilogram, and that's, again, for water only. So I'm gonna put my mass in, just like before, of 1.5 kilograms, 
and I'll multiply that by 3.33 times 10 to the fifth, um, and that's joules over kilograms. Okay, and so we, we just kind of follow this simple zigzag pattern all the way up until we reach whatever temperature we want. Um, and we end up with it equaling 499,500 joules, okay? Um, next phase is I want to go from 0 to 100, so that's this point right here where I'm in the liquid phase. Um, I'm going to use Q equals S, or I'm sorry, I'm forgetting, I'm turning into a chemist here. Got to, got to stay into the physics mode. So mass times specific heat times temperature. Uh, my mass is 1.5, same as before. Specific heat is 4186. And change in temperature, since it's going from 0 to 100, is 100 degrees Celsius or 100 Kelvin, whichever you would prefer. 100 times 4186 times 1.5. Now remember that this is just the change in temperature, so you're not actually putting in a specific temperature, you're just taking the final minus the initial. So in this case, I have 627,900 joules of energy. Next phase, I want to go to the, to the uh, gas phase. Um, this is a flat phase here up because I'm not changing temperature, I'm just going from liquid to gas. And so I'm going to use what I did here, the second one, which is Q is equal to mass times latent heat. And we're going to use the latent heat of vaporization in this case. So 1.5 kilograms. Latent heat of vaporization is 2.22 uh, times 10 to the sixth. That's joules divided by kilograms um, for water. Um, so 1.5 times 2.22 is 10 to the sixth. Oops, did that wrong. 1.5 times 2.22 gives me. 3,330,000 joules. Okay, and then the last one, what's the amount of energy to go from 100 to 140? So this is 1.5 times, um, and since my temperature has changed, I'm gonna use Q equals SMT in this case, times my specific heat of 2010 joules over kilograms uh, Kelvin, and then my temperature change was 140 minus 100, so 40. So simple enough, 1.5 times 2010 times 40, so 120,600. And then in this question, I'm saying, what is the amount of energy required for, 1 .5, for a 1.5 kilogram block that is held at a temperature of negative 40, and it's gradually heated to 140? So that's what we just did, we just figured out all those temperatures. So all I have to do to calculate this is just add up my five totals, 126,000. Oops, overdo it there. Uh, 499,500 plus 627,900. And then the real big energy, of course, is always going from a, from a uh, liquid to a gas that requires an enormous amount of energy, comparatively speaking and then I'm heating up my gas finally. And then I just add all those totals up, okay? So you, I'll let you add the totals up. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, um, but that's essentially what we're doing. Anytime we're heating an object or cooling an object, we wanna see how much heat is involved.